Hey, welcome. This is Pierogi Joe, and we see the cooking pot is awaiting, but this time it's got a little water in it. Today we are making kopitka, K-O-P-Y-T-K-A, potato dumplings. They are so simple. What'd you see there? That's the ingredients. Five potatoes, one egg, two cups of flour, and a little bit of salt. Of course, a little bit of salt in the water because we're going to boil those potatoes. It's a very, very simple recipe. You can make these and uh, you can freeze them. You can, uh, they, they'll last for days. You can make different types of toppings for it. Um, this is the equivalent of like a gnocchi or gnocchi, however you want to pronounce it. But it's, it's very similar to a gnocchi. Remember, in that region, everyone's got their own version of the same things. Everyone's got a dumpling. Everyone's got a, a, a kielbasa or sausage. In this case, kopitka. Uh, we're going to make this today. It's really, really simple. These main ingredients. Now, the ingredients you see are probably is what for uh, one basic serving for it. Um, I'm probably going to double or triple the recipe because I like cooking and storing things. So let's get this started. I peeled the potatoes. I cut up the potatoes. We're going to dump those potatoes in boiling water and we're going to boil them until they get just just normally edibly soft. I wouldn't let them go too long. What, maybe 10 minutes? Remember, we have, we deal with relative kind of times here. When they're ready, they're ready. And now our chopped up potato into the water. I said we're gonna boil that for about, I don't know, 10 minutes. So they're soft like you would use them for mashed potatoes. Okay, and then we're gonna strain those out and mash them up. Potatoes, kopitka. The potatoes have been boiling for about 10, 12 minutes and I think they're about ready. All you can tell is the fork will be able to easily go right through it and it's easy to just make it fall apart. That's how you know they're done. You don't want them too mushy. All right, we put the um, pota the cooked potatoes through the colander, strainer, whatever you want to call it. Let those cool off a little bit. Then we're going to um, mash them. Okay, and I'm going to show you how to do that next. To mash our potatoes, you can either do it with a uh, hand masher, or I uh, have an apparatus like this, uh, a food mill, um, or a ricer. A ricer is a little more old school. This is it works very much the same like a ricer. For example, this food mill comes with three different uh, discs. The um, the uh, coarse one, which is what I use for uh, smaller spatzels. Uh, we're going to use the medium one today, and there's a more fine one. You can use the same apparatus for um, uh, straining tomatoes or mincing up things for for canning. But uh, the reason we're going to use the middle one is we don't necessarily want it smooth like a mashed potato would be if you whip it or run it through like a mixer but we want a little very 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 little bits of uh, potato in in the in the dumpling enough that you recognize it's present but we don't want too much so we're going to go with the medium medium size mincer it's a pretty cool apparatus the potatoes are still warm and so what i'm doing is i'm running it through the mill here okay I want to do it when it's a little warm because they're they're much easier to mash through and you can see what it looks like okay. there we have our mashed up potatoes there's little itty bitty chunks of potato in it like I said that's why I use the medium coarse one but there we go we're gonna let this cool off I'm gonna uh, it's actually cooler weather right now here in Ohio, so I'm going to put it outside. It's a lot more cooler than in here. You don't want them to freeze, but you want them to cool off. Then we'll start rolling them into our dumpling dough. So, to the outside she goes. All right, our potatoes are cooling. Uh, you will see recipes where some people say you should do it while it's warm. Uh, some people say make it completely cool. Uh, my experience is somewhere in the middle. Uh, you don't want it to be as hot as coming out of the, uh, you know, coming out of the pot, but you want it to be just when you uh, get rid of the cold. And so it's a lot more easier to handle. So our potatoes are cooled off, at least cooled off enough to handle them. Uh, 
at 45 degrees outside, it took less than an hour. So we're going to transfer in that bowl. We're going to refill this pot with water and get it ready for boiling. Kopitka. Almost there. Look at those eggs waiting and the flour waiting so patiently. So we have our cooled off potatoes. We have our eggs, a couple of uh, dashes of salt, and our flour. I did make a double batch. That's why you do see two eggs. I didn't put all the flour in just in case it already gets thick enough. Um, you know, you can't remove the flour, but you could always add a little flour. So we're going to mix that together and make it a nice uh, dough that starts to not stick to your hands. Now you could start it with a, um, a spoon. When it gets to this consistency, you want to get your hands in there and start kneading it together and start making it a dough. So we did, use, uh, we did use all the flour. And so as you see, it comes to a point when you knead it with your hand that it doesn't, uh, it's no longer sticking. It's a little bit silky. It's, it's uh, able to be worked with. And it, you want it so that when you do squeeze it together, that it does not come apart and that when you do split, there's no error in it, there's no gaps. So this is about right. And we're gonna start rolling these into ropes. We lightly flour our cutting board or whatever surface you wanna use and you start to roll it out. Okay, and then after a certain point, we're gonna cut it and roll that out. You want it to be about a one inch round, okay, rope and we'll have a lot of these. So we're gonna keep doing that and and uh, working it out and spreading it out into rope. And you see, I broke that in two. That was the size I said I would break it. And then I rolled it into that. It's about a one inch round. So remember that before, that was two, broken half. And I'm gonna do that with the rest of our dough and then we'll cut them up. In the meantime, I had the water boiling since I started mixing the uh, dough and the egg and the potatoes. So we're getting there. After each job, uh, roll or ball of dough there, you want to add a little bit more light flour because it does make it easier to roll it out. You see back and forth, you spread it out until it becomes like a one inch rope. Or some people call them snakes, whatever you want. But the idea is you want one inch. And of course I am doing it with two hands when I don't have the camera. So someday I'll have some kind of apparatus so I can hang the phone up and use, and maybe you'll even see me too, but actually Probably don't want that. You want to hang tight from that. If you roll it just back and forth like this, it's not really going to become solid. It's going to end up splitting like that. So you want to go from like top to bottom, back up, of course, with two hands. And that way you get a nice even roll all the way through and it overlaps. And you can see even as I'm doing that, it's not only getting bigger, but it's definitely making a more uniform shape. So you want to keep that in mind. You don't want to just go like this. It's just going to create a middle like that. Okay, so I'm going to go up, down, up, down. Okay, over and over again. We're almost done. And there they are. Potato dumpling rolls or snakes or whatever you want to call it. Remember, I did a double batch. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So three and a half of those would be about your single batch of five potatoes. I did double because I like... Uh, eating them for a long time, sharing them, storing them. So next we're going to cut them. And as I said, the water's boiling, a little salt in the water. We're in the last, uh, running third and heading home, right? The last, last leg here. And there you go. You cut it with a real sharp knife, about one inch long, about one inch long pieces. And you cut it at a diagonal, like at an angle. It's just the way the Kulpitka is shaped. So it's very easily... A slice, slice, slice. Going back to two hands. I'll show you what I want done. And there you have it. All those ropes of dough. These wonderful, beautiful little pillows of potato dumpling dough, about one inch by one inch, cut diagonally, as you can see. All right, this is all of them. And we're going to drop them into the water, and they're done when they float. All right. Our water is boiling, a little salt in there. And I'm gonna um, spray the pan just a little bit with a little canola oil. You could brush any oil on it or uh, maybe, maybe even a butter, but you just don't want them sticking when they come out onto the pan because we're gonna 
um, you know, portion them up or whatnot. All right, you see, we're going to drop them in individually. Okay, we have about half of that tray. You want to lightly just stir them so they're not sticking. But now they're good. You get the good, once you toss them once, they're going to be good. Wait for those to float, and they'll be done. I'm going to steal a little bit of music from the Rolling Stones and say, You're a pretty, 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 pretty dumpling. Yeah, not as rhythmic, but hey. So we're cooking those. It'll take about five minutes for them to start boiling uh, and rising to the top, and that's when they're done. You can see some of them are starting to come to the surface a little bit. That means they're almost done. We'll wait for most of them to come to the surface. They swelled up quite a bit because they had flour. They're almost there. So it wasn't even a minute uh, from last time I paused the film and um, you know said keep boiling them. As you can see, most of them have come to the surface. In fact, all of them have. So we're going to take them out. You can strain them out like that. You don't want to dump all the water out because you're going to put more dumplings in there. Okay, you shake them off a little bit and... Wow, look at that. Oh, I can't wait to top those with some mushroom sauce or... You can also, um... You can also do a uh, butter and bread crumb in, 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 a, in a frying pan and then put that on top like a crackling or a crusty. Um, you could also put bacon on top of it, like I said, mushroom sauce. It wouldn't be wrong with a pesto. So there's really nothing you can't do with it, but we know how to eat dumplings if, uh, if we're into Polish eating. So let's go ahead and put that second batch, the last of them in there, the second half. We're almost done. All right, we drop the other ones. Remember, drop them in, give them a light stir, just so they aren't sticking to each other. And by that time, they've uh, developed enough of a hardening outside on the outside they won't stick with each other, so. About uh, five more minutes. All right. It's been about four minutes. I actually was watching the clock a little bit on this one. So four minutes. And what's really interesting is, again, we learned you don't need a lot of special tools. It doesn't need a lot of budget. It's really easy to make the best food in the world. Polish food. Anyone can do it. You can do it. It's not that hard. But don't tell anybody it's so easy because they'll think you labored over it and you a lot more credit for that. Yeah, it's everything out of there. So there you have it, kopitka. Potato dumplings. Mmm, maybe some sour cream and dill, mushroom sauce, pesto. If you like what you see, subscribe to this page, this channel. You know what I'm talking about. All kinds of Polish goodies and some other stuff too. See you next time.